Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Uh, today's class is the first of synthesis, truly synthesis classes. Okay. The heterocyclic synthesis can be divided in many different classes, subclasses. But uh, what I have done, I have structured the course in a fashion where first I will talk about the five membered heterocycles, and then obviously the six member, and then if time permits, then we talk about the fused ones few heterocycles like say pyroloperidine uh, or furanoperidine those sort of things. Okay. Then that means the, the first class uh, which I have titled is the uh, pyrrole 1 in which uh, we will be talking about only the pyrrole synthesis and pyrrole synthesis is such a vast area it can be divided into actually two, two classes it could be even more, but uh, I have restricted to only two classes. And uh, in this one, uh, what I will do, I will uh, select some of the important pyrrole synthesis and uh, then I talk about one by one. Uh, the, the most conventional ones would be talked a little later. Like many of you know, in case of pyrrole synthesis, there are three uh, well studied or rather well known uh, synthesis. The one is Paul Knorr synthesis, as in Knorr synthesis, and hand synthesis. So, we will we'll be talking about those little later and uh, then among the five member let us say pyrrole, pyridine uh, sorry pyrrole, furan and um, thiophene um, many of you know the pyrrole is actually more abundant uh, both in nature as well as in as synthetic materials. So, there are if you go through the literature you will find almost every year there is a new synthesis coming up. Okay. And it is a uh, versatile area and the, the, the lot of people are innovating a lot of methods. So, but uh, uh, if you uh, go to a uh, recent review uh, in chemical review by Gevorgan, one scientist name was Gevorgan and he has written an article of uh, 30, 130 pages uh, only on heterocyclic synthesis and with more than 800 references. So, it is very difficult actually to, uh, to keep track of all these developments. Okay. So, what we will do, we will do this basic ones, the ones uh, which are more frequently used in organic chemistry. Okay. And uh, just uh, um, let us uh, look at the um, complexity of the synthesis actually. The first one, if you uh, look at the pyrrole nucleus and uh, try to construct a pyrrole nucleus or a substitute nucleus. So, you, when, where do you start from? Traditionally, and there are two ways to start from. Okay. So, what are the two ways? Number one is um, uh, retrosynthesis, right? All of uh, because we have been uh, we have been uh, trying to uh, organize uh, any kind of synthesis by retrosynthesis. The other way other these are the two ways where to start let us say I give you an unknown problem and I say that okay, you synthesize this molecule then you have to start your thinking. Okay. There are two ways uh, one is to synthesis other is which one is the other other best possible uh, or other uh, best possible is the transform base. So, transform base uh, because uh, if I just uh, try to uh, show you the retrosynthesis, retrosynthesis is not really uh, that is easy and most often you know the practicing scientist what would do they go, go by the uh, uh, transform. Initially they will do the retrosynthesis, but when they get lost they will try to do the synthesis, but I will let us say uh, just uh, very briefly 
uh, how many ways can you um, retrosynthesize your pyrrole nucleus? Guess? You know, how many? I mean, just a, give me a number that I can break this nucleus uh, in five different ways, three different ways, uh, ten different ways, twenty different ways. Give me a number. That means what I'm trying to say that retrosynthesis is very complex, very complex. Uh, our, uh, if you uh, any idea, how many ways? Actually, uh, I have a note. Uh, I'll just show you. Uh, <coughs> I don't know whether you can see it or not. This uh, is uh, 18, right? 18 different weight, but I can write more. So that means we are lost. So which one to? I mean, for example, but um, if you have attended my synthesis class, uh, if you remember, but my first clue about the rate of synthesis is uh, the first clue about the rate of synthesis is uh, anybody remember? Uh, hydrolytic cleavages, hydrolytic cleavages. So, what do you do? You just choose any one bond, especially the one that is attached to a um, heteroatom, uh, uh, just hydrolyze it. That means, uh, at one point you have to um, add hydrogen, other point you have to add OH, uh, result would be re result, and then of course, the cleavage, and so. Then you have to have a little bit of this idea about this um, electronegativity. For example, uh, when I write the first step, right, um, uh, hydrogen can go to this nitrogen as well as carbon, but all of us know nitrogen is more electronegative, so it will pick up this hydrogen. So that means uh, then uh, uh, we now uh, restrict this choice to just one. This hydrogen should be on this side and OH should be other side. So you break the bond here, right? And the rest remains as it is. So uh, let's uh, uh, talk about one more. Again, if you do so, if you do so, what you'll see, uh, <coughs> again you have uh, one heterat. All of us know these enols. Enols they rapidly isomerize to the aldehyde, so we will not touch that. And then um, you have one more. Uh, here bond carbon nitrogen bond. So, we will break them and then uh, um, what about the hydrogen we had we will keep them then the new hydrogen should be placed and then new OH should be placed here. No A should be placed here. Now, uh, all of us know this uh, tautomerism and what you will find? You will find that it is nothing but succinaldehyde nothing but succinaldehyde right. So, this is one of the best way of looking at the electrosynthesis. Uh, uh, instead of going through all possible, say in a nucleus, let us say, uh, how do I generate all this? Um, first, you go by the number of the bonds. For example, I can clip one, uh, I can clip one bond here, then second bond here, third bond, fourth bond, fifth bond, so like this number of bonds. Then, what you can do, you can have a simultaneous cleavages, means uh, at a point you can uh, clip both the bonds together then three bonds together, four bonds together, all possible combinations. Then there are two more important ones are uh, like you can have a ring expansion. Let us say if you have to make a five member ring. So, you start from four member ring or three member ring, then expand the ring system, okay. ring contraction that is also a pretty uh, popular way of making the pyrrole ring systems. If you have a pyridine uh, sorry, uh, pyridine, pyridine nucleus you can just contract it and there are ways. So, you can uh, make the pyrrolytic systems. So, there are ways I mean not only this, uh, this uh, I mean a typical bond cleavages this thing that thing you can, but um, I think the best way to uh, look at the retrosynthesis of the heterocycle is the way that hydrolytic cleavages. Next thing that one should uh, think about uh, hydrolytic cleavages plus isomerization isomerization of the normally isomerization of the functional groups or the double bonds. This is one of these ways to look at and the third one or the, or the vice versa in isomerization followed by hydrolysis or um, hydrolysis followed by isomerization this is one of these. Third could be uh, third, third uh, general kind of the transform is the redox that means either you oxidize or reduce all these things. Okay. 
but uh, these are the, if you if you want to go by these retrosynthesis they are very broad now if you go to the transform based i think we have already talked about right uh, the the conventional ones is um, paul nor and the next one is probably nor and third one is uh, hans right hans uh, thing these are the three conventional ones and the latest ones latest one i think uh, uh, from i think we will start from here from the fourth one then we'll go back if the time permits the first, uh, this is a very useful one this is called barton uh, jard reaction barton jard reactions barton jard reaction and then there is one um, called van leucen uh, pyrrole synthesis uh, likewise the uh, likewise there are many more uh, i think uh, maybe uh, one should also know <coughs> piloty uh, robinson uh, synthesis piloty robinson synthesis piloty robinson synthesis there are many more uh, i think uh, again uh, depending on the time um, maybe we'll talk about little bit of this uh, uh, which again Huygen uh, synthesis, then uh, uh, we have Huygen synthesis, then there are many others. I think uh, maybe we'll uh, uh, these are a little bit of the specialized ones. Siba, uh, 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 scientist at Singapore, and then there are many, many, many. You can go on. I mean, I have selected only those which are really popular, and uh, this is a my prediction though. Uh, it may not be true, but uh, I have added this one, Jana. Jana is actually uh, is from Jadavpur University. Uma Sis Jana, I don't know whether you have heard of him or not. Uh, he has published a paper in 2011. If the time permits, you should talk about that. Uh, you should learn about it. It's a, a very unique synthesis, though. It has been published in JOC, and uh, it, it is likely to be a well-cited method. So, if the time permits, we will talk about this. But as a whole, now what I say is, I mean, the most successful approach, most successful approach. If you see, uh, if we classify by the number of the atoms, uh, first one is basically this 4 1 kind of cyclization. 4 1 means you have a 4 atom species and 1 atom species, like the Paul Nord, Paul Nord one. This is the most successful one. And then uh, this other successful one, of course, uh, 3 plus 2, uh, 3 plus 2, 3 plus 2. Okay. So, these are the two, I mean, so you can think about, I mean, there are all possible uh, ways of looking at uh, retrosynthesis. But uh, when it comes to pyrrole, you can concentrate on these two uh, numbers 4 plus 1 and 3 plus 2. When it uh, three, 4 plus 1 means Paul Nord, uh, 3 plus 2 means uh, Nord and Hans, even Barton, Van Luysen, all these, all these are basically. Then uh, pilot is little different, Huizgan is again 3 plus 2, Siva again 3 plus 2, Jana is, uh, is different, it is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Okay. He has we combined all these chemicals together as you will see and then put little bit of the ferric chloride nothing else very unique. He has four different starting metal and has just added 10 percent ferric chloride and reflux he got all well substituted pyrroles well defined pyrroles okay, we will talk about that. Okay. And <coughs> let us begin with Barton Jard reaction. Okay. So, when I say so. Uh, Uh, many of you know what Barton is, right? Who is Barton? He is a Nobel laureate. He died only uh, uh, 10 years ago uh, from England. Uh, D. H. Bart uh, R. Barton. He has produced very uh, well known scientist. Uh, uh, Jard, Somir Jard is one, one of his students. So, now what he has developed, uh, is, uh, once again, when I talk about a new synthesis of pyrrole, you have to uh, keep it in mind either 4 plus 1 or 3 plus 2, that is mostly of course. And this is basically belongs to 3 plus 2. So, when I say 3 plus 2, that means you have to think about 3, three, uh, plus, uh, three uh, atom component and four, uh, 2 atom component. Okay? Uh, 2 atom component. In his case, in his case, 2 atom component is that is what you have to remember. In his case, uh, 2 atom. Um, um, 
component is a nitro uh, alkene nitro alkene okay that means these two are the uh, contributing atom contributing atom the other one obviously if, if uh, it should be uh, c and c c and c component that means when i say c, c, c this is actually c c component two atom and the other component is c and c that's what you have to say that means you have to choose a starting material where it will provide a carbon followed by nitrogen followed by carbon and that's the, that's the trick there and in his case it is a, this c actually comes from isocyanide and this the third one this comes from this acetic acid group and the starting material is so is this one i guess you understand what it is it is ethyl isocyanoacetate ethyl isocyanoacetate it's not a cyanide isocyanide okay and uh, isocyanate if they, again very briefly i can tell you how to make it very easy to make you start from glycine glycine hydrochloride okay then boil with methyl formate it gives the n formylation uh, if time time is i'll give you the reaction and then do the dehydration the dehydration uh, there are about 10 different ways but the most commonly the used method is POCl3 and triethylamine. So, that is very easy to make anyone can make it. So, that means the starting metal is only this one this nitro alkenes. Any case uh, <coughs> then uh, if you use a base obviously, the uh, um, most commonly used base is little a strong base is required potassium tertiary butoxide all of you can guess what happens. Uh, so, uh, actually uh, base uh, has a function to deprotonate of, of the most acidic hydrogen in this case uh, the acidic hydrogen that would be picked up um, is the one between ester and the isocyanide group. And then all of us know that Michael Addison reaction is one of the fastest reaction fastest reaction. So, it will undergo Michael addition, Michael addition what does it do? It creates a new carbon ion, new carbon ion. So, eventually what will I have uh, now say, so it is a new bond here and um, then C right uh, N and this is a carbon here and this is minus and many of you know I think the way one should write this isocyanide it is basically a plus carbon means it is a plus center and a minus center right. So, this plus and minus forms a bond here mistake yes there is a mistake right there is a mistake actually this this should be ester ok. Then what? So, now we have a 5 member ring uh, C double bond N this is the ester here R 1 R 2 right. Now, the negative charge is here and oh sorry here also you have to have a nitro group here the nitro group here right. What next you can think of? It is an exchange carbon and deprotonation intramolecular deprotonation. So, if all in intramolecular so the deprotonation would take place that means this uh, here this hydrogen would be coming and the anion would be forming here right uh, anion would be forming here uh, CO2 and R2 and NO2. Okay. So, next there, there is I mean all kinds of the deprotonation take, you know, would be taking place and uh, if, uh, eventually uh, there would be a loss of higher nitrous acid. So, uh, eventually what you will be getting I mean you can do all kinds of this isomerization all these steps and eventually you will get the loss of 
okay, NO2 minus and R1 and R2. So, what you see here there are things to be remembered what is this I mean what, what is new here new here isocyanide is taking plus into the 3 plus 2 cycloaddition reactions okay. and um, then this uh, um, what else uh, interesting here rather what else you have to remember often we do not see loss of NO2 NO2 is often is a uh, is an activating group it activates the alpha position right. Uh, assist the in, uh, or rather increase the electro, elect, um, acidity of the alpha hydrogen, but in this case it is uh, uh, basically activating a double bond that means making a um, olefin as Michael acceptor at the same time uh, the NO2 also serving a, as a leaving group that is what you have to remember. Okay. And this reaction is uh, very useful and uh, the last step is uh, abbreviated. I mean you can do all kinds of proton dislocation and elimination on all these things. And uh, now what else uh, just we will see an example I mean how powerful this uh, synthesis is uh, if you uh, look at a uh, target molecule for example. Uh, in this case the target molecule is a, a once again a pyrrole here then I will write uh, just simply R in this R equal to here is uh, benzyl in this a particular example then and you have uh, 2 carbon and uh, acetate here acetate here let us say. And now if you are given a synthesis or synthetic problem of this kind. So, first thing you recognize that it has a pyrrole nucleus then you think about there are there are ways if you do not you have you have forgotten the uh, reactions then you try to develop your own retrosynthesis. Uh, if you remember something about this then you go by this let us say as I said 4 plus 1 or 4 plus 2, but 4 plus 1 you have to remember 4 plus 1 is little more restricted towards 2 5 di substituted pyrroles especially when you are heavily substituted the small one is very good. So, that is a transform based uh, approach. Okay, the other one what you see uh, just if you go, uh, go, go back to the earlier slide you will see uh, Barton gives what mainly 3 4 because your nitro alkene has a uh, substituent uh, so you have, um, that would be um, uh, giving the substituent at the 3 and 4 positions. So, we see that structural features here and um, also the isocyanide uh, if you recall the Barton reactions that it provides carbon nitrogen carbon. So, that means at some point you have to have a nitro alkene here nitro alkene here. So, that means uh, the nitro alkene that has to be uh, that is to be um, made is some kind of right this one then you have acetate. So, you have this methyl here nitro and then oh, nothing else. Uh, this is your isocyanide ethyl isocyanide or in this case is this one that is it and this is isocyanide. So, the, so that means it boils down to the preparation of a nitro alkene nit methyl nitro alkene. Okay. So, <coughs> What is this? Now you need a base. In the previous example, I gave you a base uh, tertiary butoxide. Now I give you a base that this is also possible with uh, DBU as a base. That means you do not have to have an inorganic base, organic base is sufficiently low. Okay. okay. Now, uh, this one nice now nitroalkene. How do we make nitroalkene? Uh, those who are familiar with the very nice reaction though or again a known reaction starts with H. Okay. So, what you have to do you have to make a compound of this kind then you have to have a living group here somewhere and in this case the living group is this mind it and you have uh, two then we have one more acetate here one more acetate here. Okay. So, 
<coughs> how do you make this? What is the critical bond? You make this one. Okay. So, then if you have a substrate of this kind, let us say the beta acid oxy nitro compound. So, in, in the presence of base, so uh, presence of base and um, again the base is nothing but uh, dBu. So, you can have an E 1 C B kind of reactions that means, hydrogen is picked up uh, nitro is uh, alpha hydrogen of nitro compounds is very acidic I mean almost as acidic as aldehydes okay, even more acidic. So, uh, it loses uh, acetate group and eventually you get to this one, but um, how do you get this nitro, so nitro acetate compounds and uh, there is a reaction many of you know there is a reaction known as there is a reaction known as nobody okay Henry reaction have you heard of Henry reaction it is nothing but it is an aldol condensation aldol condensation of nitro compounds aldol condensation of nitro compounds and in this case what do you do you take this nitro And then uh, react this, uh, react this with acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde. That's it. Uh, once again, in the presence of base. And what is the base here? The base is DBU. So DBU is serving a lot of purposes. And right. So the, this is equivalent to what? When you do this reaction, actually. Uh, so what you will have? This is nitro and in this case it will have basically aldol condensation. So, in aldol condensation two components are the aldehydes or ketones, but in this case one of them is aldehyde other is the nitro compound okay. and this is OAC. So, that means after this aldol you get this one then actually you have to use a reagent in this acetic anhydride to activate the OH group to make it a better living group. And how do you do acetic anhydride? And then uh, what else? Uh, pyridine. That's the commonest one. But um, also you have to know in this case, if you do use pyridine, uh, it might lead to many things uh, because uh, you know that the, it can also straight away give you the corresponding um, uh, corresponding uh, nitro olefin and other things. Okay. So you have to restrict this. That means the uh, by a new choice acetic anhydride and sulfuric acid. This is uh, I think most often not talked about, but this is one of the nicest way of doing it. What do you do in case of acetic anhydride pyridine you uh, activate the OH groups right uh, with the loss of uh, hydrogen etcetera etcetera, but by using sulfuric acid actually you are activating the acetic anhydride. So, sulf sulfuric acid proton uh, protonates the acetyl carbon uh, oxygen and that and makes this formation of acetyl cation easier. Okay. So, this is the, there are two ways one can make. So, that means that eventually it gives this one, but <coughs> then what next? Uh, how to make this? How to make this one? Okay. In the, I mean basically when I talk about synthesis uh, at the end of the synthesis you have to re evaluate synthesis on the basis of availability of the starting material. This is the most actually I mean we often ignore this aspect in synthesis, but that is the most important aspect of synthesis that means you have to make use of easily available starting material. In that case the synthesis should be the better one. Uh, when I talked about that Jana's uh, pyrrole synthesis what he has done he has taken all these readily available starting materials. Okay. Then uh, he used a reaction that is uh, uh, enough to give you a particular molecule. Okay. So, you have to keep it in mind your starting material should be readily available easily available. Um, okay. So, to make this one, so one can uh, think about what is it? It is a basically a, a 3 carbon aldehyde and a nitro compound 3 carbon aldehyde and nitro compound. So, how do you get it? So, it is an alcohol right. So, I mean uh, now uh, one can reduce this 
we, we can reduce this with how do you reduce chemo selectively this aldehyde group keeping the nitro intact. Huh? Uh, NPV I have no idea whether it works or not, but uh, any other uh, suggestion uh, you have two reducible groups nitro and aldehyde and dibulb possibly would work, but again not readily available though. Uh, you have to have a, two, uh, a cheaper starting reagent. Okay. Uh, in this case it is uh, boron dimethyl sulfate complex, boron dimethyl sulfate complex. Of course, next step is acetic anhydride, acetic anhydride and acid. This uh, okay. boron dimethyl sulfate, boron dimethyl sulfate complex is discovered by AC Brown and an I, and IIT KGPN, right? I told you in the fourth year class. Who was who was he? Arun Kumar Mondal. MSc from IIT Kharagpur KGP in 1971. Okay. And, but next thing we are still one step away from the completion of the synthesis. Okay. How do we make this easily available this nitroaldehyde from a very easily available starting material. Okay. Uh, without wasting time let us see. Yes, acrolein readily available, commercially available, but what do you do? Uh, but you have to choose the other starting material, other reactant. So simple, right? Only thing you have to add that means as if you have to do a little bit of the Michael addition. Michael addition where nitro NO2 minus would be serving as the Michael donor and nothing and you will not believe the reaction is so simple you take sodium nitride, sodium nitride and, and acetic acid nothing else the reaction is very simple that means sodium nitride also can undergo Michael addition to acrolein. Okay. So, as a whole you see here the synthesis of the pyrrole has been uh, eased by the use of Barton Judd reaction. Okay. Uh, let us uh, look at one more reaction, one more reaction this is also a very powerful reaction, very powerful reaction. So, um, the next one we talk about is uh, Van Luysen uh, pyrrole synthesis, Van Luysen pyrrole synthesis. This is a very, uh, it's very similar though. It's a, again the mode is three plus two, mode is three plus two, and uh, very similar. So uh, like the previous one, what you need is a double bond, activated double bond. So it has to be alpha beta unsaturated, something like this, right? So, in the previous case also, but you had in a nitro group here in the place of acetyl group. Then was the other one again a C and C, C and C fragment, C and C carbon nitrogen carbon fragment. What is it? That means here nitrogen here and I think the way I have written it seems like it is an isocyanide, isocyanide and then the, the, this is the trick and, and Van Luysen probably I am not sure I think is a, an Israeli scientist I am not sure. Okay. Now, what do he see here what is it? Uh, this is a tosyl group and see this is CH2 group methyl and isocyanide. So, this is known as uh, this is uh, popularly known as in you will find anywhere tosmic Rosyl methyl isocyanide. What is it? It is equivalent to C uh, N C fragment, it is equivalent to a C N C fragment like the one before. 
right and if you use sodium hydride in this case sodium hydride in this case uh, what is expected that this the one this uh, hydrogen that is activated at methylene hydrogen and uh, would be deprotonated with sodium hydride then same old thing Michael addition taking place. So, you will be getting a new carbon ion that means and I will just write tocyl group, tocyl group. Now, you have a carbon ion here right and carbon isocyanide means plus and minus. So, it will form a new bond here and this. So, it is a 5 membered ring now, now this carbon is minus right and here you have this tosylate, tosylate here. Okay. So, then, then you can go on uh, it will uh, you will have uh, olefin here and this is uh, nitrogen at some point it will uh, this uh, be like this uh, tosyl here this is hydrogen and uh, then uh, I mean so on so on you can just basically uh, lose the minus uh, what uh, tos uh, methyl then this is uh, benzene and uh, what you will be getting you will be getting this minus methyl uh, this is sulf phenyl sulfinate <coughs> this is sulfinate not sulfone this sulfinate and then uh, isomerization etcetera eventually you will get the, if you do the isomerization you will get this uh, pyrrole here I think oh there is a methyl group here and a methyl group here. So, okay. That is it. So, it is very similar to it is very it is very similar to very similar to the one uh, the Barton and Jad reaction oh, what is uh, what is the difference? Difference is that the CNC component uh, carries the living group in this case tosyl group in the previous one what is the nitro group and this that was this nitro group that was in the two, uh, two component two, uh, two, uh, two atom component, but in this case the living group is in three atom component and in the place of nitro it is the sulfur. Okay. And this is a very nice way of doing it and, and the outcome is very similar to barton jatt reactions. What you see here that you are getting a 3-4 disubstituted 3-4 disubstituted um, pyrrole ring system. Okay. And <coughs> something little more not heterocycle uh, this compound is very useful tosmic. I do not know whether you know or not in, in general uh, it is a very useful compound in uh, carbon chemistry. Uh, Let us say if you have a <coughs> ketone of this kind and you do, uh, try to do the homologation and put a cyanide here. How do you do? This is actually known as Van Leeuwen reaction. The previous one is called Van Leeuwen pyrrole synthesis in this case this is known as Van Leeuwen reaction. This is a very simple trick just basically you are adding a carbon adding a carbon mind it uh, you started with an isocyanide and you are ending up in the cyanide and if all these things are going away including your methyl methyl uh, that methylene group etcetera etcetera. Okay. And, uh, is nothing but tosmic tosmic and i think uh, dme dme is a solvent in this case uh, dimethoxy ethane and potassium tertiary butoxide so very useful very useful reactions you want to add a carbon onto the nitrogen uh, carbonyl group and this is one of the ways of to make, make it okay so let us see that means both the reactions are very similar now let us uh, look at one more reaction, one mere reaction that what I said uh, this was done by 
Marxist Jana. And wh what he has done, you will see, I mean, uh, it is pretty, pretty interesting. I mean, I mean, all kinds of uh, the starting metals we think about uh, in, in learning in organic chemistry, aldehyde, and then. Uh, Okay, I'll, I think uh, I'll make it acetyl acetone. What else? Uh, one more thing. So, it's a four component reaction, there is four different starting material, and the reaction is done in one part. And <coughs> this nitro compound. So, the, the uh, previous two synthesis also were involved in nitro, uh, nitro compound and this one and the ferric chloride only 10 percent, 10 mole percent of the starting materials and the net result is in one, just a reflux by the way, just a reflux uh, no solvent. I think nitro compound is given a large excess, little excess, little excess what you, uh, you get and uh, this is uh, this one and uh, oh sorry uh, this is uh, r1 sorry r1 and this is r3 and this is r2 this is r2 this is r1 you see here I mean it supersedes all these pyrrole synthesis and he has made some more than 20, 30 different pyrroles by this method. And the trick, trick is very similar. What is the trick? Again uh, you can just classify this method into uh, 3 plus 2 systems, 3 plus 2 systems. Although officially it looks a little more complicated, but it is basically when I say th that means to memorize this reaction, uh, if you uh, consider this as a 3 plus 2 com reaction that is pretty easy. Uh, so, uh, how do you get this uh, 3 plus 2 and what are the first reactions you can think of let us say. First reaction you think of if you have a 4 component reactions of the, like these you have, I mean you have to just uh, mentally uh, make up your mind to decide which one of the is the fastest reaction. Normally if you have an amine and alcohol uh, sorry aldehyde the shift base formation is the okay. But that too again in equilibrium that means often the, uh, the shift base SS are in equilibrium with the aldehydes and the ketones. Okay. So, you have to have a reaction which will be irreversible and the best irreversible is the reaction that is your Henry reaction, Henry reaction means the reactions with the aldehydes and the nitro compounds. So, aldehydes and the nitro compounds that means that would produce what? R3 and right, is not it? It is just like alcohol condensation. This aldehyde and the nitro compound would be producing this like, let like us say, if you take benzaldehyde, for example, uh, to, uh, to just refresh your mind, take benzaldehyde and nitromethane, and in presence of base, I think this is HS, right. Uh, uh, it gives you <coughs> nitrostyrene. Nitrostyrene is very easy to make. It is, a, it is a described in Vogel's book. Nice green compound. Nice green compound. You can make it in one day. without any problem. So, so that means so that means this is a must uh, first reactions. Okay. What next? So we have seen that these two would be reacting. Obviously, then the other two are left out, right? So I mean. And a beta keto diketone, one three diketone. What what is it a reaction? Any, anybody can guess? Anybody can guess? The way I have written here, I can write beta keto diketone. It's a very very fast reaction. You can do in just half an hour's time. Take acetyl acetone, all of you have um, right handled at some point. Take acetyl acetone, dissolve in ether, add little bit of aqua ammonia. 
What do you guess? Eh? Akai, uh, close, in amino ketone. In amino ketone. Very easy. Just take it in a separate funnel and just extract it. You check the anomaly, you will see what it is. That is nothing but uh, this is in amino ketone, and in this case, is this one. That is it. So, if you have, and what else? Uh, what is the next step? That inamine. All of us know under, is a nucleophile. So, a nitroalkene is an acceptor, Michael acceptor. So, eventually, what you will be getting here <coughs> R1, I mean, you can do all kinds of the other mechanism, do this one, R2, in this case, R3, and this is nitro, and this is hydrogen. Right? What else? That means the Michael addition taking place, all these things, then again isomerization, they all these things eventually you get a basically addition of the two components. What, what next you can expect? What next you can expect? What next? Nitrogen will attack. Right. So, that means you have to you have to decide actually in this case this nit this nitro also is a good living group that is that we have been seeing that right. So, uh, we will we'll be getting this nitro and this is R 3, this is R 1, R 2, this is R 1 then you have everything here. What next? This is a sort of aerial oxidation kind of things. So, dehydrogenation. So, dehydrogenation will give rise to this one, give rise to this dehydrogenation loss of hydrogen which is an oxidation and that will give this one. Okay. So, it is a very good reaction actually uh, there are examples of these kinds I will not go to this, uh, we will quickly uh, look at one more reaction and this reaction uh, is known as Pylorty Robinson reaction, Pylorty Robinson reaction. What it is? Uh, Pylorty Robinson reaction. Okay. Pylorty, of course, uh, he published these reactions uh, in around 1910, and then there is a person, this is one of the very few ladies, though. Uh, if you are interested in lady scientists discovering organic reactions, uh, you have to go to accounts of chemical research. And I went to that article and then I eventually found that this Robinson is not the true Nobel laureate Robinson. Have you heard of Robinson before? Robinson Anderson, his wife actually. He was not, he is not the Robinson himself, Robinson's wife. Okay. And that article actually describes that she is one of the very few lady discoverers of organic reactions. Okay. Actually, the reaction was discovered long back, and the original one is nothing but if you take hydrogen, for example hydrogen and let us take a ketone, what do you expect? So, if you have let us say you have a ketone and uh, of this kind take the hydra and take hydrogen condense just heat it, uh, heat them together and what you will say condensation if you get hydrazone, but the many of you probably do not know if the proportional is not really taken care of actually you get dihydrazone. That means, uh, you will be getting uh, this kind of molecule dihydrogen and in fact it happened it happened uh, we did we tried to make one uh, the benzophen benzophenon hydrogen once upon a time but uh, we could see that both the nitrogens are condensed obviously and this is quite obvious right once it is condensed on the other side the other side also if the material is available and what they did the first two are just simply uh, took HCl and uh, heat HCl and heat and of course, the product is product is here uh, is this one pyrrole is pyrrole that is it that is two things to be learned it is very similar to many of you uh, know fissure synthesis right it is very similar in this case what is happening here 
you are getting you are getting this uh, isomerization to enamine right this is well known isomerization to enamine then I think all of you can just by looking at the structure you can make out uh, what would be the next step what would be the next step uh, pretty easy uh, very good so that is quite obvious right so 3 3 sigma traffic that means this this bond would migrate that means so uh, what you will be getting is this and uh, this is uh, now NH now again NH R1 so this is now we will have 3 3 sigma traffic R and R here and R prime what next. nitrogen will attack that means this nitrogen will attack uh, what you will uh, get is uh, imine then this would be an H2 uh, R here R prime R prime R and R here right. And R now what is quite important here this this then goes to uh, again in amine again in amine NH2 R prime R and in this case R double bond what next I think all of us know that this nitrogen geminal nitrogens they do not this two nitrogens on the same carbon okay, are not very compatible. Okay, one of them has to lose, one of them has to depart the molecule and so you basically uh, you get a loss of ammonia, loss of ammonia. So, you go to this uh, product that we have written before and this is this one R and R and what you see uh, in the only striking thing about this that reaction loses an ammonia that means loss of ammonia in heterocyclic chemistry is very commonly en encountered. Okay. I mean uh, ammonia is not a good and uh, NH2 is not a good living group, but uh, when you have a uh, driving force like aromatization of this kind then uh, you can expect a living group uh, uh, property of ammonia. There are other molecules. So, I mean uh, uh, this can be in fact very recently uh, just only, uh, in uh, 2009 or so there is a uh, paper in organic letters and what they have done uh, they have done, uh, taken a very similar compound but in this case the R both the R primes are in a different phase uh, on the one side and both the R's are in the other side and the Bock derivative beta, uh, beta oxy carbonyl and what you have to do you have to take xylene and then uh, uh, of course, xylene boiling point is around 140 degrees and simply heat it and uh, you will be getting the corresponding um, Bock they bog uh, protected pyrrole mind it in this case what you are losing is actually you are not losing the ammonia what you are losing bocamide bocamide okay this uh, so what is the um, what is the merit merit of the synthesis now you see you have well defined dihydrogen in the previous one was symmetrical one means all these r and r there the molecule is symmetrical but in this case you can separately add two olefinic components by a reaction known as uh, I think many of you have heard Buchwald Buchwald S yes, Buchwald Buchwald uh, amination. This is a very famous reaction now Buchwald amination it involves actually copper catalysts copper. So, if you start from an iodo compound and a hydrogen Bock protected hydrogen you can uh, do this new carbon nitrogen bond. Okay. So, <coughs> so, likewise there are many more reactions many more reactions and uh, thing uh, summary summary uh, what I said in the next class what we will be talking about we will talking about uh, how to convert this alkyne precursor to pyrrole synthesis open chain compound with a triple bond open chain compound with a triple bond and next 
one more very famous uh, style of making pyrrole uh, molecules. Remember anybody remembers? To start uh, when we started the lecture we said that this pyrrole synthesis can be classified as one, number one, uh, one is the conventional ones, other is not so conventional like this, Barton Jard, Van Leeuwen, maybe Jana and this one pilot Robinson, there are many more, there are many more. So, I have chosen this. Then other two categories of synthesis that would involve basically transition metal catalyzed isomerization, cyclo isomerizations. Yeah. Means you have to have an alkynes or alkenes and you have somewhere at a nitrogen, then you cyclize it. So, that mode is a very useful mode, we will talk about in the next class. And also there is a uh, approach, there is an approach uh, based on uh, ring contraction. You take uh, pyridazines, uh, do the ring contractions, then you do uh, have a pyridine molecule, enoxide, etcetera, you can do uh, photolytic ring contractions, all kinds. And the third one, uh, this one is a special one that is uh, starting from azido compounds, also very similar uh, to these reactions, uh, but in that case, the starting metal is azido compounds. Okay. So, we will uh, talk about those uh, in the next class.